So we're going to do the indirect method today. And this is the cash flow statement operating section. Because as you know, there's three sections of the statement of cash flows. And the indirect method is one of the ways that the operating section can be prepared. The other two sections, investing and financing, they don't know from direct, indirect. Only the operating section you can prepare using the direct or indirect method. The indirect method is where you start with net income from the income statement and you explain or you attempt to explain to your financial statement user why is your net income under accrual accounting not the same as the cash generated from operating the core business. For example, you look at the income statement and you say, well, if net income is 100,000, why isn't there 100,000 more in cash in the bank than there was last year if I earned 100,000 on the income statement? Well, the indirect method attempts to explain why to the financial statement user. Why is your net income of 100,000 not equaling a $100,000 increase in cash in the bank account? Well, one of the reasons is some of what you use on the income statement as expenses don't involve cash. Some of your expenses on the income statement have nothing to do with cash. For example, depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense. So yes, it's an expense on the income statement, but it doesn't involve a cash outflow. So it makes net income go down depreciation but since it's a non-cash expense we got to add it back to net income if you want to know what the cash generated from the core business was you're gonna start with net income and add back any of these non-cash expenses like depreciation so if your net income were a hundred thousand on the income statement and depreciation expense was ten thousand and that was subtracted on the income statement to arrive at 100,000 net income, and now you're doing a cash flow statement, you gotta add back that depreciation expense taken on the income statement. Why? Because it did not involve a cash outflow. So therefore, your cash generated from the core business would be that 100,000 net income plus any non-cash expense like depreciation taken. So you're cash generated from the core business would be 110,000 even though your net income on the income statement is 100,000. You see that? Okay. While depreciation is a pretty easy explanation as to why you would add it back to net income, bond discount and bond premium amortization are a little bit more involved as to explain why do we have to adjust a bond discount amortization or a bond premium amortization from net income to arrive at cash generated from the core business. And it's because the relationship between the bond discount, the amortization of the discount, and the interest expense taken on the income statement. So on your income statement, you have an expense for interest anytime you pay bonds back, right? Anytime you have bonds outstanding and you're paying interest. The income statement shows the expense for interest and the balance sheet will show the cash and the bonds payable and the cash flow statement will show the cash payment for interest. So what I did was I got together a little example here of assuming a company issues a bond for $1,000 but only gets $980 of cash from issuing the bond because there's a $20 original bond discount. You see the first entry? So the first entry means the company takes in $980 in cash, has to pay back $1,000, the difference being the discount on bonds payable, which has to get amortized every time the bonds pay interest. So assuming we're going to amortize this discount evenly over the 10 years of, let's say, the bonds outstanding, then you're going to amortize this discount $2 right every every year. So you see the credit to the discount for $2, amortization of bond discount for $2. Assuming the bond pays cash interest of 
Then to calculate interest expense, you would add the cash payment plus the amortization of the discount, and the interest expense would be $12 on the income statement, even though the cash payout for interest was only $10. The cash flow statement wants the $10 outflow. The income statement is already sitting with a $12 expense. And we said under the indirect method, we start with net income. Well, if you're going to start with net income, then you're going to start with that $12 expense. But if you want the cash payment, it's only $10. It's not $12. So add back the $2 difference. Because that $2 difference is the amortization of the bond discount. And whenever bonds are issued at a discount, you probably remember, interest expense is always higher than the cash payment for interest. And if you don't have that note, make sure you make it because... That will be on the exam in some way. When bonds are issued at a discount, interest expense will always be higher than the cash payment for interest. In this case, the cash payment is 10, the interest expense is 12. And whenever bonds are issued at a discount, that's the case. And the disadvantage is when you go to do the cash flow statement, if you're going to use the indirect method, you're starting with net income. And net income already has that $12 expense. So you've got to add back the difference between that expense and the cash payment, which is add back $2 because you took an extra $2 expense. So add that back. So not only does depreciation get added back to net income to arrive at net cash flow from the core business, but so would a amortization of a bond discount would also get added back. So both of those would get added back from that income to arrive at cash flow generated from the core business, the operating cash flow. Any questions so far? So on the slide 48, which of the following gets added back to net income under the indirect method? Depreciation expense would get added back and amortization of bond discount would get added back as well both one and two. Now, what about if it was a bond premium? Now, what if it was a bond premium instead of a bond discount? Well, the same bond, if it's issued at a premium, would be issued for above a thousand, in this case, 1020. And we'd have to pay back a thousand. And the difference would be a credit to premium on bonds payable for 20. So that's the original issue of the bond at a premium. Well, when you go to amortize that premium, Notice interest expense is going to be less than the cash paid. Same cash is going to be paid, 10, but when bonds are issued at a premium, interest expense is lower than the cash paid. We saw the opposite when bonds were issued at a discount. I told you, make a note. When bonds are issued at a discount, interest expense is higher than the cash. Well, when bonds are issued at a premium, it would be logical to imply that interest expense will be less than the cash, and it is, every time it will be, doesn't matter if it's straight line method or effective interest, interest expense will be lower than the cash payment whenever bonds are issued at a premium. Now, why do we care? Because if we're doing the cash flow statement under the indirect method, we start with net income. Well, net income had an expense of eight. Well, the cash flow statement wants an outflow of 10. So how do we go from an expense of 8 to an outflow of 10? You're going to have to subtract two more. So instead of adding back the amortization, we're going to subtract the amortization from net income. So if net income is given and you have an amortization of a bond premium under the indirect method, you would subtract that $2, not add it back, because since you only took an $8 expense for interest on the income statement, net income is actually too high, too high for our purposes. We want the cash outflow of 10, not the interest expense of 8, so take $2 more away from net income. So, correct. With depreciation, we add back. With bond discount, we add back. With bond premium, we subtract. Now, could you memorize that? Yeah, you could, because it's never going to change. It'll always be that way. 
but I'd rather you understand why. For bond premium, I'd rather you understand that interest expense is lower than the cash payout. And on the cash flow statement, we're interested in the cash payout of 10. We're starting with the interest expense from the income statement, which is only 8, which makes net income too high. Because if expenses are low, income is high. If expense is only 8, net income is going to be over by 2. So take 2 away when you go from net income to cash flows generated from the core business. Take away 2 more because we want an outflow of 10, not an expense of 8. See, the income statement's prepared under accrual accounting. It has revenues and expenses. The income statement's not wrong, but it's just not 100% helpful when we go to prepare the cash flow statement. So we have to make adjustments from net income to arrive at cash flow generated from the core business, the operating cash flow. If we're starting with net income, we're starting with an expense of 8. If we want a cash outflow of 10, we're going to have to subtract 2 more. So bond premium, you're always going to subtract the amortization of the premium. Bond discount, you're always going to add it back. Why? The bond discount features interest expense higher than the cash paid. So the income statement is going to have a $12 expense, which means net income is going to be lower by $2 because higher expense means lower net income. But we don't want an outflow of 12 on our cash flow statement. We only want an outflow of 10 on our cash flow statement. So we add back the bond discount amortization of 2. So they have a bond discount. They want to know which section it should be reported on the cash flow statement. In the operating activity section, letter B, you would start with net income. And if this is the only adjustment you'd have, you'd say net income plus the bond discount amortization equals cash provided by operating activities. Exactly. Let's do another one. All right, so which of the following gets added back to net income under the indirect method? We know depreciation expense gets added back. Now, bond premium gets subtracted, but bond discount amortization gets added back. So we like B, 1, and 3. Here's what we know about the indirect method so far. We start with net income from the income statement. We add back depreciation. We add back amortization of the bond discount. We would subtract the amortization of the bond premium. Now we're going to talk about gains and losses that are on our income statement and what we need to do with them to get our correct cash flow from operating activities. Why do we have to add back all losses and subtract all gains? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Hey, it's Darius. Take advantage of the spring break combo special and save 50% on FAR, Reg, Audit, and BEC. Go to cpaexamtutoring.com home of the 88% passing rate in the first quarter, 2019. People ask me all the time, why should I use the I-75 CPA review course? Well, don't ask me. Ask some of these 78 people who've left me a recommendation in the last year or so. Go to my LinkedIn profile and contact these people. They'll tell you everything you want to know about me, about the I-75 CPA review course.